scope of the standard. This statement should be applied by an enterprise in presenting profit or loss from ordinary activities, from extraordinary items and prior period items. It is also applicable in accounting for changes in accounting estimates and disclosure of changes in accounting policies. Mind well, this standard is not applicable for the tax implications related to the above items. Clearance of some of the term use. Prior period items. Prior period items are income or expenses which arise in the current period as a result of errors or omissions in the preparation of the financial statement of one or more prior periods. Example, purchase of rupees 1000 was not recorded last year. So, prior period items are actually because of errors and omissions, right? We forget to record some transaction in the books of account in the previous period, then we should say this is prior period item. So mind well, error and omission must be proved before we take anything as a prior period items. Accounting policies. Accounting policies are specific accounting principles and methods of applying those principles. It's very simple to understand. Let us take some examples on this. Example, inventory valuation method, depreciation method, investment valuation method, goodwill valuation method. All these methods are called accounting policies, right? How to determine net profit or loss? All items of income and expense which are recognized in a period should be included in the determination of net profit or loss for the period unless an accounting standard requires or permits otherwise. So it's required to include all the items. See, there is no any difference between extraordinary and ordinary item as far as their inclusion in the financial statement is concerned. Though disclosure will be required separately for both the items ordinary and extraordinary but both the items are required to ascertain the right amount or right figure of the profit or loss for the period all the items means ordinary as well as extraordinary items disclosure must be separate in both the cases now what is ordinary item let's see to it when items of income and expense within profit and loss from ordinary activities. Now, ordinary activities are routine activities or we should say the main activities of the business. So, when from ordinary activities, the profit arising or a loss arising are of such size or nature or incidence that the disclosure is relevant to explain the performance of the enterprise for that period, then the nature and amount of such items should be disclosed separately. Example, write-off of inventories, disposal of long-term investment or assets, legislative changes having retrospective effect, litigation, settlements, etc. Now, these are the things which are ordinary items, which are routine part of the business, right? This may happen many times in the business, but this is required to be disclosed separately because the effect of this item or the figure which have been debited or credited in profit and loss account is of such importance that if we do the separate disclosure of it, maybe an investor or the reader of the financial statement can get the exact idea of profit, right? It may be possible that the investor wants to think like if this item, if this extraordinary, uh, if this uh, abnormal item was not there in the profit and loss statement, then what would have been the profit, right? So for that sake, at least we should give him a separate disclosure for it. So this is all about ordinary items, right? These are part of financial statement, but if it is larger, if of such size and nature, which is required to be disclosed separately for the sake of easiness and for the sake of detailed information giving to the financial statement user, then the separate disclosure is necessary. Extraordinary items. 
extraordinary item should be disclosed in the statement of profit and loss as a part of net profit or loss for the period only so we have to treat these item as ordinary items only right the nature and the amount of each extraordinary item should be separately disclosed in the statement of profit and loss in a manner that its impact on current profit and loss can be perceived example attachment of a property of enterprise maybe by income tax department or any other department because the business has not paid or short paid the tax and earthquake in case of some kind of natural calamities if some losses have been incurred right by the business then the figure of those loss should be separately disclosed as an extraordinary item see generally what we do in profit and loss account we first arrive at the normal profit of ordinary items and then we include or exclude the item of extraordinary things right so get the profit to get the profit after the effect of extraordinary item now what is prior period items we have already seen the definition now we are going to see what we are going to do with the prior period items how we are going to give the effect of the prior period items the nature and amount of prior period items should be separately disclosed in the statement of profit and loss and in a manner that the impact of such items can be perceived right what is the total impact on current year's profit because of those prior period items that should be disclosed separately that is very important thing right the term does not include other adjustment necessitated by circumstances which do related to the prior periods are determined in the current periods right see sometimes what happens the situation may not be clear for a time but you know during after passing of some time maybe in financial statement of the next period or while preparing the financial statement of next period we got slightly more clear than you know uh, the items which were actually given effect in the last financial year only right like let us take an example arrears payable to the workers as a result of revision of wages with retrospective effect during the current period right now these are the this transaction is a prior period transaction but actually as per this as we will not classify this thing as a prior period because it is not our mistake because of some kind of changes in say law of wage right we have to provide wage at higher level with retrospective effect so whatever is the effect whatever is the extra wages we have to pay right for even prior period that will be debited in this profit and loss account only certainly notes you can mention certainly notes you can mention that because of the retrospective effect of the wages some kind of extra expenditure have to be debited in the profit and loss account now accounting estimates an estimate may have to be revised if changes occur regarding the circumstance on which the estimate was based or as a result of new information more experience or subsequent developments this is not extraordinary or prior period items this is just change in accounting estimate which is completely different from uh, extraordinary items or prior period items the effect of change in an accounting estimate should be included in the determination of net profit or loss in the period of change if the change affects the period only and in the period of change as well as in future period if the change affects both the periods it is in, if it is impracticable to quantify the amount this fact should be disclosed what are accounting policies or what to do with the accounting policies to ensure comparability of the financial statement of two different periods accounting policies should be followed on consistent basis a change in accounting policy should be made only if adoption of different accounting policy is required by only three reasons number 1 statute number 2 for compliance with the accounting standard and number 3 the opinion the accountant's opinion right that the change would result more appropriate view of the financial statement the effect of changes in accounting policies must be separately disclosed 
to the extent it affects the current period and also to the extent it affects the future period right we have to quantify right this much of amount is the effect of current period and total this much of amount can be the effect in subsequent or future period or coming period the disclosure regarding effect on future must be made in the period in which the accounting policies are revised if the changes are because of compliance with the accounting standard disclosure must be made as provided in that accounting standard only made in the period in which the accounting policies are revised if the changes are because of compliance with the accounting standard disclosure must be made as provided in that accounting standard only so if you enjoy this presentation it is a very brief reading presentation of as5 